We graded picks 17 through 32 of the 2019 first round a few days ago, which means we had to get to the first 16 picks at some point. That of course is today's video, and what you may not have realized is how little production there has been from some of the first round picks from a few years ago. Of course there are players like Josh Jacobs and Montez Sweat, but there were several players that have been flat out underwhelming since entering the league. But in today's video we are going from picks 16 through 1, and before we get started, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, it's each only take a second to do and it would mean the world. Now let's begin. So we start in Carolina today, which was pick 16, Brian Burns, a defensive end. He has had a solid start to his career so far to say the least, and Carolina as a team obviously hasn't been great in his two years, but Brian himself has played well. He has 16 and a half sacks to his name, an impressive 37 quarterback hits including 21 this past year, and should be a fixture on this defensive line for some time. With how much Carolina has invested in their defensive line between him and Derek Brown and Gator Garcmato as he pans out, this should should be a good pass rushing team for years to come. Two years later, this pick gets a B plus. Pick 15 was, well, Dwayne Haskins. Haskins has been all over the place as a pro, and there is very little I can say positive about him since entering the NFL. Two years in, he has more interceptions than he does touchdowns, he was flat out released from the team he drafted him, not even a team that would trade for him, and to make matters worse, he said draft night, and I quote, the league made a mistake, end quote, letting him fall that far. There were a few off the problems with him since entering the league, like this year with the strip club and everything, and he is now a backup. Not surprisingly, this pick gets an F. From one extreme to another, 14 was Chris Lindstrom, a guard for the Falcons. Chris missed a good chunk of games in his rookie season, but managed to play all 16 this past year and was pretty great at that. He was consistently good, and any questions heading into this year whether he could stay healthy and be that guy are gone. He was a top 10 guard this past year without a doubt, and if he can keep that moving forward, Chris will eventually become a Pro Bowl player, which is expected from a first round pick. Two years in, this pick gets an A. 13 was Christian Wilkins to the Dolphins, who on draft night notably jumped in excitement to give Commissioner Roger Goodell a shoulder bump. In two years, Wilkins statistically has not been elite, but that is generally the case with his position. Wilkins has been a terrific leader for the Dolphins, though, and his energy is contagious amongst the team. He is consistently the first guy to help celebrate with teammates score touchdowns, and those things are things teammates love. It's not like his play is horrendous and he makes up for it because he's vocal, because he is a good player. Not elite, but he is a solid player, and two years in, this gets a B plus. 12 was Rashawn Gary to the Packers, who had a woeful rookie season and looked like a draft bust or really on the path to become one, if we're being honest. He was the number one recruit in 2016, and it looked like in his rookie year that he was still kind of riding off that hype and that he was going to be a bust and really kind of be the next Robert Kimdichie, if anyone remembers him. However, in year two, he showed why he was a first round pick, as his pressure percentage was high, and according to PFF, was leading the NFL in pressure percentage since week 10, and that's even over the first ballot Hall of Famer Aaron Donald. He had some pressures that resulted in interceptions for the Packers this year, which obviously don't show on the stat sheet in Rashawn's favor, and we hope he continues this in year three. Because of the insane improvement and elite play he had down the stretch of 2020, two years in, this gets an A-, minus, though could very easily be higher a year from now. 11 was Jonah Williams, a tackle to the Cincinnati Bengals. So with Joe Burrow being as battered around as he was in 2020, the Bengals offensive line obviously gets a bad rap, and rightfully so for the other guys, might I add. Jonah is far and away the Bengals' best offensive line, and despite missing his entire rookie year, he played good this past season. Offensive line also takes some time to adjust to, getting used to the demands and rigors of the NFL, and Jonah has adjusted well. He showed flashes of greatness this past year while also showing some rookie mistakes, but overall his year of work was good and very promising towards the future. He just needs to stay healthy and he will be fine. Two years in, this gets a B+. 10 was, and this is where it starts to get fun for this draft class, but 10 was Devin Bush, a linebacker for the Steelers. He missed a lot of 2020 after tearing his ACL, so we obviously wish him the best in recovery, but he has been a good selection for the Steelers. Devin will be just 23 years old at the start of next year, and barring off the field decisions or more injuries, he will be a starting linebacker for the Steelers until he is at least 30 years old, and probably a year or two after that. He is everything you look for in a linebacker and will be a good player for some time, but can he be great? and truly dominant is another question. I think he can be, but time will tell, and this pick gets an A-two years later. 
Nine was Ed Oliver to the Bills, who's had an okay start to his career. He hasn't been dominant like the player he was at Houston, but he also hasn't been a bust either. Eight sacks in two years is nothing to scoff at given his position, and with the way this team is going and the mentality and the energy of the Bills, I expect Ed to step it up in year three. We saw a 2018 first round pick they have step it up last year, referencing Josh Allen for those that don't know, and he was a world of a difference between his first two years and his third. Now, to be clear, I don't expect that type of climb from Ed, but I do think he tapes a leap next year. Two years in this is a B-, but I do think he takes another step towards becoming a pro bowler in 2021. 8 was TJ Hawkinson to the Lions, a tight end who really stepped up his game this past year. He didn't have a great rookie year to say the least, as TJ opened his career with a 100-yard performance in his debut, but had less than 300 for the rest of the entire season. So heading into 2021, he was a one-game outlier and needed to step up. Tight ends take a little longer to develop than most positions, and him making the Pro Bowl this year is extremely encouraging for his career path. Now, I try to reserve the A-pluses for a few dominant players in their class, and TJ is a good player, but he's not an overly dominant tight end teams have to scheme around. He could be one, but he isn't yet, and for that reason, this gets an A, not an A+. Next is Josh Allen of the Jags, who had an outstanding rookie year as he made the Pro Bowl and looked to be the next great pass rusher for Jacksonville. He had 10.5 sacks as a rookie and just 2.5 this past year, but was on pace to have as many quarterback hits as he did in his rookie season. It was unfortunate luck for Allen to have an injury, and he still is a good player. It's not like he's a bust now all of a sudden because of the 2.5 sack half year, and he should get back on track this year. Two years in, this gets an A-. Six was Daniel Jones to the Giants, who has had an up and down start to his career. There's been times where he's been good, and there's of course times where Daniel Jones has been Daniel Jones. There was legitimate question entering this offseason whether the Giants would draft another quarterback and replace him, but they've said he is their guy for at least 2021. Now to be fair to Daniel, as we try to be fair to everyone, he hasn't had great weapons to work with as Saquon has been injured for much of his career, and the Giants receivers aren't great either by any means. That being said, I don't think he is some stud of a quarterback because he's not, but Daniel hasn't been Dwayne Haskins either. Two years in, this gets a C-. Phi was one of the best players in the entire class, and that is Devin White to the Bucks. Two years into his career, he is a second-team All-Pro, a Super Bowl champion, and a large reason, though not the only reason to be clear, please don't take it that way, the Bucks won the Super Bowl a few weeks ago. There was some backlash to taking a linebacker in the top five of the draft, such as positional value and was it really worth it, and everything of that nature from draft analysts. Two years later, and a Lombardi Trophy later, these questions and criticism are gone, and Devin White and Levante David have turned into the best linebacker duo in football. A plus pick for the Bucks. Four was a shocker at the time, as it was Cleveland Farrell to the Raiders, and Cleveland was regarded as a prospect with a high floor but low ceiling, meaning he could probably get six to nine sacks per year, but never be a Khalil Mack Defensive Player of the Year type award winner the Raiders previously had. And to this point, he has performed about that way. Cleveland is a good, hard-working player, but will, unless something crazy happens, never be an elite dominant force, and that's fine, because there's not many of those guys in the league to begin with. Now, for four overall, that's not a a very good selection considering you'd want to draft that high, you want to draft a player like Khalil Mack. And I'd like to see production step up a little bit, and for now, this pick is a C-. Three was Quinnen Williams, aka Big Q to the Jets. Now, Quinnen had a rough rookie year to say the least, as he didn't play very well and he didn't adjust to the NFL the way many thought he would, myself included. However, in 2020, he more than turned that around and had a great year, all things considering. Quinnen had seven sacks this year and he was also a force in the run game. He played great and now that it is a full year to get better and a full healthy offseason, year three should be the first true season we see Quinnen unleash and become a dominant defensive lineman. Right now, this is a B+, but Quinn has all the potential in the world to get as good as he wants it to be, and a year from now when we do this, I expect it to be at least an A-, if not better. Two was Nick Bosa to the 49ers, who had a great rookie year and unfortunately tore his ACL early in his second season. So with Nick, a player who was a clear difference maker on a team that went to the Super Bowl in year one, I'm not going to say, oh, well, he tore his ACL and it's his fault, so now it's a C- minus because of the lack of production because, well, that's not the case. Could Nick have had a sophomore slump with DeForest Buckner being an indie and opposing offensive line focusing more on him, though? Yes, absolutely, he could have. But that is speculation and hearsay, and I'm not going down that route. Out. Nick was an A-plus after his rookie year, and until he does something production-wise, or lack of, to not be that, he still is an A-plus now. 
And the final player we discuss is, of course, the number one overall pick from 2019, Cardinals quarterback Kyler Murray. Kyler in a few seasons has 61 total touchdowns and has over 8,000 total yards. For the Cardinals, who have been pretty irrelevant for the past decade aside from a few years, this is a home run of a pick, as Kyler and DeAndre will be there for the next few years, and Kyler is going to be there for probably the next decade, if not longer. The accolades will come as he gets more and more comfortable in Cliff's offense, and when you get a franchise quarterback and as good as Kyler is, this pick is an A+. Now, you may be wondering, for other franchise quarterbacks in the NFL like Patrick Mahomes, for example, well, a player like him would get an A++, as that is not normal to be 100% clear. But anyways, that is all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, I encourage you to please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps out the growth of the channel tremendously, and it makes a larger impact than you think. It would also be very much appreciated. Now, I will see you guys next time, And but until then, have a great day. Love you guys. Deuces. Peace.